Okay, guys, welcome to our UTSA admission session. My name is Heaven Tharp, and I am your admissions counselor for Sinton and Mathis High School. I do cover Southeast San Antonio, Coastal Bend, and the Upper Gulf Coast. If you guys have questions during the presentation, feel free to chat me. I can answer them as we go, but we will also have an opportunity to do a live question and answer at the end of this presentation. I have shared a little bit of my contact information or ways to get in contact with me. Some of you have already contacted me, so that's great. I have you guys in the system. Uh, the first one will be how you can send me an email. The second one will be how you can schedule a virtual one on one with me at the bottom of my email signature. It will say get rowdy and schedule a virtual one on one. So that will be what you'll do. And then I also do have an Instagram handle UTSA admissions underscore heaven, which is my first name. So if you guys want to just keep in contact that way. That's totally fine as well. I am going to turn my camera off just so that you guys can focus on the presentation, but I do have the chat button up. So let me know if you guys have any questions. So the University of Texas at San Antonio, future roadrunner. So UTSA's mascot is the roadrunner. His name is Rowdy. So a lot of times you'll see me play on this, like my email signature, get Rowdy and schedule a virtual one-on-one, -on -one, or I'll say get rowdy and fill out your FAFSA. I just love bringing rowdy into everything. San Antonio is the seventh largest city in the nation. Um, we are the second largest in Texas, but for you folks who come from a smaller town, I would not be afraid. We're very well known for our small town feel. It feels like a lot of small towns mix into one big town and we're blended very, very well. There also is a lot of rich culture here in San Antonio. So that's very embedded in our campus as well. And you will see that as San Antonio continues to grow, so does UTSA. We do have a lot of partnerships with the city of San Antonio, just because we realize that that is our community that we're serving. So you will see some of the perks of that later on in the presentation. Next, we do have three campuses, but we're going to have our main campus, which is actually up here. For those of you who aren't familiar with San Antonio, it's literally 10 minutes from Six Flags and La Cantera Mall, which is a big shopping center. UTSA Park West is going to be for our athletic roadrunners. So it's going to be where our athletic student excellence center will be held. And then down here, we have UTSA's downtown campus. Some of the colleges that are held there are architecture and construction, health community and policy programs, as well as if you guys are thinking of going on to get a master's degree, we do have a program there as well. The UTSA Institute of Texan Cultures is right down here in the corner. That is actually a museum. Uh, it's known as our Hemisphere Park campus. And so it encompasses anything and everything that involves Texas culture. So that's a really cool thing to get involved, get to know Texas. You'll be able to get in free with your My UTSA ID as well. Some of the things that our students or our roadrunners like to enjoy right across from UTSA is the shops at La Quintera. Contrary to belief, not only are there shops, there's also a Popeyes, a Whataburger, Chipotle, Target, GameStop, so kind of anything, everything that you would need while you're living on campus, we do have that right there. We also have a Palladium IMAX theater. We're very known for this theater. It's super duper nice. So if you want to catch a movie, grab some popcorn, maybe on one of the weekend days as you're trying to de-stress, that's a great resource. We also have the block, which is our food truck park. This is going to be where a bunch of local food trucks from San Antonio Park and lots of students like to go there, gather, uh, play cornhole, life-size checkers, anything like that. So just some things to think about outside of um, classes, of course. And then, of course, we do have Fiesta Texas. So we have the boomerang right here in the picture, which is one of our famous rides. Housing and residential life. Right now, it's not mandated that you guys um, live on campus your first year. So if that's something that you are know for sure that you don't want to do or something that you do want to do, just know that you have the option of either living on campus or off campus. 
we have a couple of different housing options and I've done some things to kind of make it more obvious. So Chisholm Hall and University Oaks are italicized because they are actually owned and operated by Campus Living Villages, which is a third party company. So they are a separate legal entity from UTSA. But you do have to be a UTSA student to secure a lease with them. So that is very important. We do also have a couple of villages and Alvarez Hall is going to be your kind of main um, dorm style hall, which has a kitchenette and everything in it. Now, oops, sorry guys. Now Guadalupe Hall is actually set to open in fall of 2021. So you Roadrunners will actually be the first person or people to live in this dorm hall. These are the floor layout plans. So I'll walk through these with you. Um, currently, right now, we are not offering students to be in a traditional dorm, which is two students per one room just because of COVID-19 and everything that's going on. So you will have your own room. And then this right here is what's called a Jack and Jill restroom. So you will be able to go into the restroom and then your roommate or suite mate would live in this bedroom right here and be able to share this kind of common space. Now in the apartment style for University Oaks, you would have your own bedroom, the other roommate would have their own bedroom, but you would share this living room, a kitchenette, and then a bathroom as well. Lastly, you have your suite style. So there's actually going to be four people. Two people would share the same bathroom, then you have that living room, and then you would also have a kitchenette. So really it's up to you on what the best option is. Now, there are some benefits of living on campus. There has been statistics that show that 12% um, of your GPA will actually be higher than students who do not live on campus. So if you're coming to UTSA for your first year and your academics are very important to you, there has been statistics that show that students who live on campus do academically excel better than students who do not. It is fast and it's easy. So you're right there on campus, you can walk to class, there and back. You can also make memories because you're building uh, those rapport with your cohort or your people who are in the same degree as you, kind of in the same goal set as you as well. And then also, of course, it's very simple. So we understand that you will be living on campus and that you're a student. So if anything happens to occur with financial aid or things like that, we're pretty flexible on getting those options squared away for you. Now we do have a campus dining hall. It's gonna be our Roadrunner Cafe. This is much like your um, lunch style dining hall. So that buffet style, you can come in and out. The next one is we have a couple of different options as far as fast food. So we have Chick-fil-A, Greens to Go, Smoothie King, Einstein Bagels, Rowdy Global Kitchen, which is like an international food place. And then we also do have a Chili's Bar and Grill, a full Chili's Bar and Grill. So if you are like me and you really want to like sit down and really enjoy your food, you can definitely go to that and it's right on campus. Another great thing that we have is we do offer two Starbucks on our main campus and one at our downtown campus. And then we also have this little Starbucks bike truck, which will have like your traditional hot coffee and your nitro. So if you're a coffee drinker like me, that's definitely a plus. Now next we have our Rowdy Curbside Food Truck. This is really cool and very popular on campus because as you will get to know as a college student, it can be kind of, um, I guess um, you get used to eating the same things over and over again. So you can get kind of tired of eating like Chick-fil-A over and over again. So what our Rowdy Food Truck does is it will actually rotate its food menu so that you're not always having the same options. And so for this as well, this is something that be, can be included in your dining meal plan as well. We do have some really great things that are happening at UTSA. So we just turned 50 and we're very excited on how much we've grown and some things that we have in store. For you all, the residence hall will be opening fall 2021, which will be Guadalupe Hall. A lot of you all will be dormed here as freshmen, as well as if you're interested in our honors college, we'll be having our honors populations live there. It does have study spaces, social areas, high tech labs, as well as there's a rumor that a Starbucks will be located inside this dorm hall as well. So that's pretty awesome. For the VAU bus system, we are really close to the city of San Antonio. So this is one of those perks. 
What ends up happening is when you come to UTSA and you do orientation, you will be given a UTSA card. What will happen with this card is that you can ride around on the VIA bus system for free. So let's say you wanna go downtown uh, to the downtown campus. Maybe you have a class there. Maybe you wanna explore the city of San Antonio, but you don't have a car or you wanna to get to some of our special events. You can definitely utilize this VIA U bus system because it's free with your tuition and fees. Next, we have some student experiences and resources that I want to let you guys know about, specifically before you think are thinking of applying and just giving you some options. So we are committed to supporting a smooth transition to college and providing resources for our students. So one of our biggest ones is our first year experience. It connects you with students like upperclassmen who are on campus that can help you navigate maybe the campus, your class schedule. It also puts you a part of a cohort. So if this is something that you're interested in, um, I would definitely take advantage of it and sign up for it. They additionally offer scholarships and academic resources just so that we make sure that transition is smooth. Next, this is one of our more popular resources is our UTSA Study Abroad Department. They are um, very, very, well known across UTSA. A lot of our students like to study abroad and they offer a lot of scholarships. So some of the places some of our roadrunners have been is Spain, Italy, South Korea, Japan, Germany, France. And so you would come to UTSA and about your second year, so your sophomore and junior year, you would apply to study abroad and that office would be able to help you through that process. Next, we do have Dia de la Sombria, our Fiesta celebration. So Fiesta is normally held in the city of San Antonio the first two weeks of May for our rich history and diverse culture. And our roadrunners have said that because we're so close to the city of San Antonio, they wanted to start their own as well. So now we have not only our own Fiesta, but kind of one centered for our roadrunners. We do offer over 350 student organizations and we have 17 NCAA Division I sports. So if you're either into sports or into any organizations, that's definitely something that you wanna take advantage of and in getting involved with on campus. We have anything from Quidditch to book clubs, pre-med club and everything in between. If you don't find a student organization that is listed on our Rowdy link, you can also create an organization. So it's a really great way to get involved on campus. Now, I know that I have you guys all excited and you're ready to become a Roadrunners. So let's talk about some of the academics that we have to offer. We offer over 160 degree programs across eight different colleges. These are some of the ones listed. So I wanna hit on a few because I know that I was able to see you guys' um, majors. So there were a few that wanted to be nursing. You would actually fall under multidisciplinary science. So be sure to add that on your Applied Texas. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in the next slide. Um, I know there were a few engineers on here as well. So we have a few different engineering options. We have biomedical engineering, computer engineering, mechanical engineering, just to name a few. So you'll wanna be sure that you really hone in on what type of engineering you want to be. If you're not too sure, then we can definitely explore that once you get in touch with your academic advisor. Now, some of these majors will have what's called major specific requirements, and I'll speak about that a little bit later in the presentation. For our students who are interested in nursing, pre-med, medical school, dental, um, you will go under a certain degree. And at that point, you will, if you're, let's say, pre-med, you will get in touch with a health professions advisor and they will advise you on what the best major might be for you. Maybe that's microbiology or immunology. Maybe it's just biology. Maybe it's biochemistry. It really depends on what kind of path you want to take. Now for my nursing students out there, you're going to undergo what's called a two plus two program. So you're going to come to UTSA, you're going to put multidisciplinary sciences as your major here because we don't currently have a nursing school. But what's going to happen is if you meet all of the criteria, then at your second year when you're applying to nursing school, we guarantee you that you get an interview with UT Health Sciences San Antonio's nursing school. At that point, should you get into UT Health Sciences Nursing School, you would receive two degrees upon graduation. You would receive a bachelor's in multidisciplinary sciences and a bachelor's in nursing. 
So that is something that we'll definitely want to talk about um, between the two of us or uh, just with your admission counselor, your academic advisor, so we make sure that you're prepared. This also office also helps you with that interview process. It helps you get experience. Um, so I wouldn't say to be deterred away. Definitely talk to me more in depth if you fall into one of these categories. Next, if anyone's interested in being a teacher, I don't think I saw anyone, but in case you're thinking about it, we are um, certified by the state board. So if this is something that you want to maybe get your hands wet and just try and experience it, we do have a lot of internships surrounding Bexar County, which is uh, Bear County here in San Antonio. I will send you guys an email with this link right here, but essentially this link just takes you to all of the degrees and it offers you intel on what those degrees are, what career paths you would go through, and also just the financial, um, like what your salary may be. Yeah, Dominic, you can, you should be able to unmute yourself um, or you can drop it in the chat. I'll give him a second just in case he's typing. Yes, great question. So I'll go back here. We do have electrical engineering. It's going to be right here. Hi, Brian. Yes, um, we did. We are going to we are recording this meeting. Um, and then I think Nathan is going to post it somewhere for you all. So you all will be able to um, have this recording as well. We do have electrical engineering. And we also for our engineers. I know there's a few of you. We do have a specific admission counselor for engineering, so I'll be helping you guys, but as well as she will, just to make sure that you guys are like calculus one ready and you have all the prereqs to determine those as a major. Great questions, guys. And I'll be talking a little in a little bit about um, where you engineers would fall into because y'all will have major specific requirements. So let's talk about admissions into UTSA. This is for a general guaranteed admission. So this means that you would be admitted to UTSA, but maybe not into your specific major. So I'll talk a little bit about that here in a second. If you're in the top 25% of your class or the second 25% of your class, you actually do not um, need any SAT or ACT requirements for spring of 2022. So this means that for you fall 2021, um, fall spring 2021, 2022, maybe if you're thinking about coming into the spring, you won't need an SAT or ACT requirement. If you're in the top 25% of your class, you will be automatically admitted. Now, this means that if you're in the second, third, or fourth quarter of your class, you're going to undergo what's called committee review. So before there was a temporary score that we needed to have you undergo committee review, and now there isn't. What this committee review means is that we're going to ask you for additional documents. They're not mandatory, but it's only going to help your case if you submit these documents. Now guaranteed admission to your specific program. So this is where my engineers will fall, my architecture and my cybersecurity people, as well as business you guys will need to look up what your major specific requirement is. So for example, for my engineers, you guys need to test into calculus. So you'll take what's called the Alex exam and you'll have to take a math Alex exam additionally as well as the TSI. Once you take this exam, you'll have the opportunity to do modules and to try and get yourself to calculus one if you haven't already tested into it. 
And that's something that we'll, we'll work on once you're admitted to the university. Now, this is how you apply. Numbers one through four are actually what are required by UTSA to have an application complete. So you would apply online via Apply Texas or the Common App. You would pay the application fee or submit the fee waiver. You would need to send your official high school transcript. So official means that it needs to come from a counselor um, or a secretary or registrar specifically from the school. And then number four, as you can see, I've scratched out because we will not be needing that. Now, if you undergo committee review, these bullet points is what's important. The reason why I have them as bullet points is because these are not required. So it is possible that you would be complete once you submit one through three if you undergo committee review because these bottom bullet points are optional. If you have dual credit from Del Mar College or another community college, I would highly suggest submitting your official high school trans your official college transcripts. But then number two is very important. So if you're considered for committee review, you will want to submit the optional SAA from Apply Texas. So it's what tell me about some challenges you've had during high school and how they have shaped you. So you'll definitely want to write that essay and then submit it to us. Next are two letters of recommendation. So the two letters of recommendation can be from people who can attest to your goals, um, what you plan on going into maybe, and just they can really tell us about you outside of um, just your essay. So that is really uh, important. You also will additionally, you'll want to submit all of these documents around the same time. So if you know you undergo committee review, I would say to first write your essay and get your two letters of recommendation so that once you hit apply to apply Texas, you can go ahead and upload those. For the fee waiver, there are a few things that normally occur. So for Great question. Nathan asks, how do students submit those additional documents? So in a second, um, I'll go into that right after the fee waiver. So on the last part of the Apply Texas, you will want to click designate the fee waiver and, or on Common App, depending on what application you're using. Or you can submit an SAT ACT fee waiver. So if you know that you or SAT, ACT fee waiver eligible, that's a good indication that you're eligible for your college fee waiver. Now, once you submit the fee waiver, that is just a request. So that means that I'm just requesting that I have a fee waiver, but it needs to be verified. The easiest way to verify your fee waiver is to submit FAFSA. So FAFSA opened today on October 1st. It will also open every October 1st for the duration of your college time. And so that's something that you'll definitely want to get in. Once you submit your FAFSA, you'll add in our school code. And at that point, it will verify your fee waiver. If you don't submit FAFSA, you can do two through five, but I just find that students have a bit of a harder time getting a hold of these documents. If you are an international student, the same um, things apply to you, but there's just a little bit of a difference. So you would need to submit an English language proficiency test if you haven't been at a U.S. high school for at least two years. So if you fall into this category, that's the only thing that is different for my international students, and I can help you guys with that as well. We do also have the Honors College. So the Honors College goes for high GPA, high ranking students. It offers you a chance to be in a small college culture, but having unique resources. So having additional resources that maybe some students don't have. Honors College is invitation only when you apply. So what will happen is you will automatically be considered based on your admission application. This isn't something that you need to apply for or anything like that. Um, but what will happen is, let's say you really want to be an honors college, but you don't get in your first year. What's going to happen is you can have the opportunity to get into honors college. Your first year, you would come to UTSA and get a 3.5 or higher, and then you would be offered a letter. And those are the only two opportunities uh, to join the honors college. A lot of our students who do attend the honors college really like it and have had great experiences. So the really important thing once we've submitted our UTSA or our Apply Texas is that we'll be given a My UTSA ID. 
This ID is where what is really important. Also, Nathan, this part is important as well for you. So students normally get an email within um, 48 to 72 business days, 48 to 72, um, sorry, hours. And you'll be asked to set up your My UTSA ID. If you happen to lock yourself out or happen to forget your My UTSA ID, which I see a lot, you guys can email me your first name, last name, that your legal first and last name and your date of birth, and I can send you a reset to your ASAP account. Be sure to write this information down because it's very important. You're going to use this to look at your admission status, to look at your financial aid, to sign up for scholarships and anything about that. Now, once you are given your My UTSA ID, you can use our document uploader, which will be where you will upload the essay topic and the letters of recommendation. That's the fastest way to use it. So you would just type in UTSA document uploader on Google. That's the easiest way to find it. And then you would use your My UTSA credentials to sign in. So you can actually submit, you can submit your documents through Apply Texas, but it's faster if you go this route and actually wait and have your My UTSA ID. We do have some important deadlines. So January 15th is our priority deadline for all of our scholarships and our financial aid and admissions priority. This means that you will want to have been admitted to UTSA by January the 15th. It does take about four to eight weeks to render an admission decision. So the sooner you apply, the better. And this is rowdy, guys. So the next one is the cost of attendance. This 10,600 is for a full academic year, which encompasses fall semester and spring. And this is for tuition and fees. Anything below this can change, but this is what an average student pays for one full academic year at UTSA. Moving forward in the semester, me and you can go over our net price calculator and I'll also offer this um, document to Nathan as well if he wants to go over it with you. But you'll be able to look at your financial aid package and look at your cost of attendance. So that number that I just showed you earlier and look at kind of what, um, what are your options. You can calculate your potential financial aid offer, look at what scholarships and grants you offer and see, do you have extra money? Do you have money left over? Do you maybe need to take out a loan? This is really good for that. And it's called a net price calculator. The next thing is your financial aid and a how to apply for FAFSA. This is going to be a really important big one. So applying for your FSA ID. I can't stress this enough, guys, but write down your FSA ID and your password because it takes 30 minutes to reset it every time you forget it. So write it down in your notes, maybe on your phone, uh, write it down in a notebook that you can keep safe so that you have this because you're going to need this every year. And if you can think about, okay, I'm doing FAFSA now, and then next year I may not remember what that was. So be sure to keep track of that. You'll do that one time, and then this will be linked to all of your information you put in, and then you will need to fill out your FAFSA. You'll do your FAFSA every year once it opens on October 1st. So if there's any students out there who said, okay, I'm a go-getter, I did this early, and I already filled out my FAFSA, it's actually not open for the next academic year. So just be sure to fill it out for this year. Additionally, TASFA is open right now. So if I have any of my TASFA students, the same thing will occur, except for TASFA is going to be a physical copy. And if you guys need me to get a hold of that for you, just shoot me an email and we can go through that as well. We do have a really great thing called our Bold Promise. We rolled it out this past year, and this will cover your tuition and fees for four years. So should you fall into these eligibility requirements, you will be automatically offered this scholarship. You must be a Texas resident. You must rank at least in the top 25% of your class. If you rank in the 26% of your class, you will not be offered this scholarship. You need to, your family's gross income needs to be below 50,500. So these are definitely for my students who have a financial need. You need to submit or have your FAFSA and TASFA on file by January 15th. So if there's any um, students who fall into the TASFA category, you're definitely still eligible for this as well. And then this is the most important one, be admitted to UTSA by January 15th. So not applied on January 1st, 
um, maybe submitted all your documents on January 14th, but admitted into the university. As a soft or rough deadline for yourself, I would say finish your application by November 1st and at the very latest finish it by Thanksgiving break so that we know that you have enough time to get this scholarship. You would also need to enroll full time in 12 credit hours. So remember that this isn't something that you need to apply for. If you meet all of these criteria, it will be automatically dispersed into your account and you'll be able to see that reflected on your ASAP. The next thing is it's called the scholarship hub. So once you submit your apply Texas, you will be given remember that my UTSA ID. I keep reiterating this. You can use your My UTSA ID to start signing into our UTSA Scholarship Hub, and at that point, you can begin applying for any scholarships listed. Now, it's very important that you guys note that you don't have to be admitted into the university to begin applying for scholarships. So if you have all your documentation in, but it's taking a while for us to get you a decision, go ahead and just sign into the Scholarship Hub and start applying. It's offered available for our students who don't have an admission decision yet. I keep saying this, but our priority deadline is January 15th for FAFSA and um, TASFA for all of our financial aid. If you think about if somewhere had free pizza and I said, okay, I have free pizza at six and all of you guys came, the people who came later around 6.30 or seven would maybe not have the opportunity to get as much pizza. And so that's why I just tell you guys, it's better to apply early and to apply as soon as possible because you're going to be awarded the biggest financial aid package. Now, it's important to also note that we do have rolling scholarships. So let's say your FAFSA comes out on January 15th. We will be adding more scholarships onto our UTSA Scholarship Hub. So always keep that in mind and always just kind of continue looking at the Scholarship Hub. Next, we have some virtual visit options. So we do have our virtual UTSA day that is coming up October the 10th. You guys can sign up via Eventbrite. It will also be in my email. It's a good chance to get to know. So maybe like the College of Engineering, if you guys are interested in wanting to know more specifically about that college or the Health Professions College, it's kind of like your traditional open house that you would do um, before classes start. Next, we do have daily virtual visits and virtual info sessions. So you guys can feel free to sign up for those. They'll be via Zoom, just like this one. We have our application boot camps. We actually have our last application boot camp next Tuesday from 6 to 7 p.m. And that will be a FAFSA walkthrough. So if you've never done FAFSA before, I highly recommend coming. It'll be from 6 to 7 via Zoom. I will be there and I'll be helping you guys and answering any questions. We also have student ambassador chat. So if you really want to get in touch with someone who is currently attending UTSA, you can sign up for an ambassador chat and chat with them. The, the visit, um, the FAFSA walkthrough. Sorry, somebody asked a question, guys. So the FAFSA walkthrough is going to be next Tuesday from 6 to 7 p.m. And I will send it in the email. Um, it'll say sign up for application bootcamp. And then on the side, I'll add FAFSA walkthrough so that you guys know. It's gonna route you to Eventbrite, which is like a ticketing system. It's free, it'll just ask you for your information and then you'll receive a confirmation code with the Zoom link. And I'll also, we also send out reminders uh, one day in advance and three day in advance as well. And it'll be the same thing for our virtual UTSA day if you're interested, it goes through Eventbrite as well. So all that information will be um, in the email when I send. We also, I mentioned this already, but UTSA day and it's now open. You can stay informed on all of the changes that are occurring by visiting future.utsa.edu, or you can stay connected on Twitter and social media at UTSA Future RR. This is our main social media page. So um, we always post a lot of really important things like today we'll post that FAFSA is now open. Thank you guys so much for coming. I posted this rowdy rush right here. This is a tradition that our students do to welcome in the new school year in football. So that is an awesome tradition as well. And then this is my contact information. So now I will turn my camera on. I'll open it up to any Q&A session. You guys can definitely um, message me privately and I can answer the questions or you can message it to the group or you can unmute yourself, whatever you feel comfortable with.
Yes, so for students who are undecided or don't know what you want to major in yet, on the first part of the Apply Texas, you can put undeclared, undecided, exploratory. So that would be what you would want to do. Um, it's not listed on our majors page, but it is a, a major that we do offer. And so just by indicating that on Apply Texas, then we would know coming in that you need to be paired up with an advisor who can explore career options with you. Great question. Don't be shy guys, I'm here to help. Awesome, okay, so the student ambassador chat, I will drop it in. I will just actually go through. I'll go through this with you guys because we have some time here. Okay, so this will be in my email as well. It's going, but I just typed in um, UTSA virtual and then it will link you to this page. When you click my email where it says virtual, you can click this page. This will be where you can do a ambassador led virtual visit or you can do this one, which is on your own. Down here, you would click here to sign up for a student ambassador visit. Now for my bootcamp people and my UTSA day people, you would click this. It takes you to Eventbrite. You would select a date, which is going, should only show next week, six to seven, click tickets, and then you would register. It's also, it's also free, so don't get nervous about it being, it costing money. Um, and so then it just makes you put in kind of your information all this information and then that will allow us to email you. So I can also drop this in the chat right now for you all, but just in case uh, you are unable to click on it right now, I will also send it to you in the email. Great questions. I'll show you guys since we're already here. Or did it switch to the majors page? Can you all see the majors page? So um, as you guys will explore, it'll say in my email, it'll say like explore majors here. So I'm going to go to electrical engineering because we have a student there. So these bookmarks right here, this indicates that you have a major specific requirement. So if you see your major right here, that means that there's additional things to um, consider when declaring that as a major. But what I really wanna show you guys is when you click more info, it will give you a little synopsis about what it means to be an electrical engineer student here at UTSA. You can also click careers, so you can look at some career options that you will be eligible for upon completion of your bachelor's degree. You can look at the sum of the industries that you'll be working in or working for. You can also look at the salaries. And then lastly, you can look at skills and interests. And so this part is where it says, okay, do you enjoy being a good planner? Are you creative and artistic? Do you enjoy learning? Do you like solving puzzles and problems? And so maybe if you find yourself in a few of these categories, this might be a great fit for you. So I always like to just show my students this because it offers you a lot of resources. Now, if you want to get really specific, you can click under this academic information and go specifically to the degree plan or maybe to the college itself and get more information and this will take you and show you different things that it has to offer so they're playing this video maybe you want to check that video out and see what it looks like to be a college of engineering student at utsa and we have that for all of our majors um, listed so just feel free to explore these options as well 
Great questions, guys. Other questions? Does everyone feel comfortable with um, filling out their Apply Texas? Yeah, so um, you would go to applytexas.org. I can add the link in your email. And what's going to happen is you'll have to create an account. So if you guys want, I can do an Apply Texas walkthrough with you guys. I can set that up with Nathan um, within the next coming weeks. But it's pretty, um, it's pretty easy. There are some things that trip students up. So let me share my screen. So you would just put, I just put apply Texas, so applytexas.org. If it's your first time, you'll need to create an account right here. Um, I have a testy account, so I'll go ahead and log in. Oh no, let me, let me see here. We have to log in in specific. Okay, let's try this. Okay, so when you log in, this is what it will look like. It'll look like my profile, my applications, and then at that point, you could start a blank application because it'll be your first time. Now, mine is right here, so I'll click edit, and this will be the first part that it lists. So I'm going to start at this first part. So for my, this will be that um, Nathan had mentioned, what do my students do who are undecided or exploratory? This is where you're gonna put that at, right here. So on your Apply Texas, if you're maybe leaning towards a couple different majors, maybe you don't know, that's where you would fall. For my pre-nursing students, you're gonna fall right here, multidisciplinary science, science education. So you would fall right there. And then of course we have a couple different options for engineering. Then you will go into a couple different parts. So as you can see that this topic SAA is optional. So I would continue and you'll be having to fill out these additional questions. Really the most important part is your extracurricular and volunteer activities. Be sure to be as detailed as possible when you're typing this in so that you can get all of your information listed and we have all of that information listed. I will also show you guys the UTSA document uploader. The easiest way to find this is for me to send you the link or for you to type in UTSA document uploader. You would sign in that first part using your UTSA credentials. For department, you'll put undergraduate admissions. For term, you all would be fall of 2021. For category, you would put uh, most likely you all would fall under outstanding application items unless it has something to do with your application fee waiver. So you would click this and then this is where you can go ahead and upload that essay and those letters of recommendation. Once you upload them, everything will show up on file. So I uploaded all of this information in attempt to get my Texas residency. So everything will show up and it will show you um, right there what is occurring. And uh, I don't want to go too into Apply Texas, but if we need to do another session, I can definitely do that uh, for you all. I have a Tessie account so we can walk through it. It's not too bad. It's pretty straightforward. Um, FAFSA and Apply Texas are pretty tricky when you first look at them. But if you guys um, want, I can go through that with you and me and Nathan can set that up. Any other questions? All right, guys. Well, I don't want to keep you any longer than you want to be here. So if you guys have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. You can contact me at the bottom of uh, my email. 
everything will be hyperlinked. So if you see something like explore majors here, all you would need to do is just double click that section and it'll take you right to the explore majors page. At the bottom, it will not say this long IP address right here. It's actually gonna say get rowdy and schedule virtual one-on-one. -on -one. Again, just double click that and it will give you available times that I have on my calendar for you to meet with me one-on-one. -on -one. So if you need um, maybe a walkthrough for Apply Texas sooner than what me and Nathan can sign up for, definitely just sign up for a one-on-one -on -one with me and we can get that taken care of until um, me and Nathan can square away the scheduled time for Apply Texas. Thank you guys so much for coming and for being here. I really enjoyed this session with you all and I look forward to helping you all on your journey to becoming a roadrunner. Bye guys.